guys, welcome back to Slow Living. My name is Esther and I try to sew stuff that supports a slow, sustainable lifestyle. In this video, I'm going to show you how to mend holes in jeans by hand without a sewing machine. It's really important when you get holes in your jeans or other garments, not to just stick the sides together and then sew it up. If you can do the calculations or visualize this in your brain, you're actually taking fabric away from both sides of that hole and you're making your garments smaller, which means it's going to rip again. We don't want that. And if you're going to take the time to mend your garments, you might as well try to do it properly. That was really hard. So the method that I'm using is called darning. It's a really simple method, but it is time consuming. It's by hand and you can use this for not just jeans, but any garment that has a rip or a little hole. The stitches we're going to do are going to cover up that rip and essentially recreate the fabric that has ripped away or worn away. All right, I'll show you the rips that I will be mending in my jeans. Funny story. I mean, it's funny. It's also kind of sad. <sighs> I was playing in long grass in a park with my child, you know, being outdoorsy, being in nature. And it wasn't until a few days later that I had these bites on my leg and a few weeks later, I think, that I saw these tiny little holes in my jeans. Something bit my jeans. And then the funnier part of the story is that my child thought it was then hilarious to go and stick a little finger in the hole. <laughs> Sounds so bad. The rip. Stuck her finger in the rip, which is on my thigh. And it tickled so much that I reacted with a little yelp. And I was like, ah! So then of course she thought it was a game and every time she spotted this rip in my jeans, which was multiple times a day because I wear my jeans to death, she would stick her little finger in and then she would go, ah! Anyway, so that's why I have to mend <laughs> these rips. I will mention that this is quite a time consuming process. Even if you have smaller sized rips like I did, I think it took me about an hour to two hours, somewhere in there, because you know, I had a little snack to mend this one hole. So if you have a larger hole, <laughs> if your rip is larger than an inch or so in size, I would recommend trying to get your hands on a sewing machine. And I have another video that shows you how to use a sewing machine to mend your jeans. I will link that somewhere up here or down there. Otherwise, set aside a few hours, maybe over time while you're watching TV. You know, in your downtime, you don't wanna be stressed. You wanna take your time to get a really great result. Like I said at the very beginning, I'm not going to be using a sewing machine at all. So I hope that this is really accessible for lots of you. You just need a few key things to get started and I'll talk you through that now. You will need thread. I chose to use this embroidery yarn, which I bought for $1 each and I matched the colors to my denim. It's up to you if you'd like to match your jeans or your garment or create a contrast thread by choosing a different color. You'll need a relatively small sized needle. It doesn't have to be a particular size, just not one that's huge and some clippers or scissors to trim your threads. I also tried using this pencil to draw an outline around the rip because I thought it would be covered by the stitches and I was really trying to achieve a very neat finished rectangle, but I wouldn't recommend you do this because in the end you could see the pencil and I wasn't very happy with that. So instead, if you have a chalk pencil or a washable marker, use that to draw a guide. Otherwise, in the end, I decided not to use a guide at all and just kind of did a very rough natural rectangle shape instead. If you have access to an embroidery hoop or a darning mushroom, those could come in handy, but I didn't have those, so I didn't use them. And lastly, of course, you'll just need your garment that you're going to mend. My jeans actually have three holes that I needed to mend, and one of them still isn't done, but I got two of them done, and after the second one, I felt like I had a lot more practice. So don't be disheartened. If it doesn't really look like what you envisaged in the beginning, feel free to unpick it and try again. All right, step one is to wash your jeans. Denim stretches or loosens with wear, so we want the fabric to return to its original pre-stretched state. I cheated because I just washed my jeans and I didn't want to wash them again. You could cheat by using an iron to steam them flat, but I had just moved and I couldn't find my iron, so I totally skipped this step. Step two is to prep your thread. 
The yarn that I bought is made up of lots of thinner threads, so I'm only going to use one of them, otherwise it will be too thick. So I'm just going to take one of those threads and separate it from the rest of the yarn. If you're using a regular sewing thread that comes off the spool, it should be thin enough to use as it is, so just cut it to the length that you would like. I recommend cutting your thread to a manageable length. I will be doubling my thread over, so I'm going to cut mine roughly 100 centimeters so that when it's doubled over, it will only be 50 centimeters. If you leave it too long, it will be really difficult to work with. It will knot easily and you'll get very frustrated. Now we can thread the needle. Because I want to work with two threads, I'm going to pull the thread all the way through the needle until it's doubled over, and then I have the two ends of the thread that I'm going to tie into a knot. I'm going to tie two or three knots on top of each other to make a larger knot. This is to make sure the thread doesn't come through the fabric as we're using it. If you would like to draw in some guidelines, now is the time. Otherwise, try to cuff or roll your jeans so that you can get a really comfortable handle as close to the area you're mending as possible. And you'll need to access the inside of the jeans as well as the outside. It's important to keep the area that you're working on nice and flat, which is why an embroidery hoop or a darning mushroom would come in really useful if you had one. Now it's finally time to start stitching. I'm going to take my needle to the inside of my jeans and poke it out so that the knot is hidden on the inside. I'll pull the thread all the way through. You can see I've started at the top left corner of my rectangle and then I'm going across to the top right corner. Again, pull the thread all the way through and then we're ready to start the next stitch. Now we want to repeat the same stitch process, but instead of going from left to right, we'll work from the right to the left. So with my needle inside, I'm going to poke it out just next to the other stitch in the right corner, then go across to the left and poke the needle in, pulling the thread through. The stitches should end up sitting next to each other nice and close so that we can cover the rip. It was really difficult to film that clearly, so I tried to show you on a piece of paper. This is the rip, and imagine a rectangle over the top. My needle is poking up in the top right corner and then going down into the bottom right corner. It doesn't matter if you work from left to right or up and down, either way you follow the same process. The next stitch will come up close to the one at the bottom right hand corner and then go in at the top right corner. Your stitches should ideally sit right next to each other with no gap in between. Since I was working with paper, this was a little bit tricky to show as an illustration. But as you can see with my actual jeans, there's no gap in between the stitches because the goal is to really cover that rip with the yarn. Once you've completely covered the rip, tie a few knots on the inside and secure that thread. You can snip it off. You can neaten up your stitches if they're a little bit out of line as well. And then we're going to repeat the same stitching process, but in the other direction. And we're going to add in a little weaving element. So I've prepared a second thread. This time I'm using a blue one and I'm going to start in the top right corner again, poking my needle up and pulling the thread all the way through. Now this is the part where I'm adding the weaving. So I'm going to go over and under, over and under all of the stitches that I did before in order to get to the other side. Once I'm through to the other side, then I'll pull my thread all the way through and poke the needle down into the jeans and pull the thread through. Now we're going to repeat this process, weaving over and under the first lot of stitches as we go from left to right and right to left, creating a woven pattern with all of our threads. Honestly, I wasn't very happy with how it turned out the first time that I did it. I just thought it looked really messy and I could still see the pencil outline. So I did what any good sewist does and put on a podcast and unpicked. I unpicked all of my stitches and I started again. I ended up doing the first lot of stitches in blue this time. And then I used a white thread to go over and under, over and under, repeating the same process. I did find that I achieved a much neater result where instead of using my needle to go over and under from one end all the way to the other, I actually did individual stitches where I would use the needle to go under a few threads, pull the thread through, and then pick up a few more threads, pull the thread through, and do this each time. So it took me a really long time to get from one end to the other but I was much happier with the result. So I'll leave it up to you which method you prefer, and I guess it depends on how much time you have on your hands.
Thank you so much for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment so that other people can find my channel as well, and also subscribe if you would like to see some inspiration for other mending projects and sewing tutorials. And I've started doing a series of sewing vlogs and more kind of behind the scenes, day in the life type thing. So jump on there and subscribe if you haven't already. I did really want to mention that these jeans that I have are nudie jeans and this is not an ad for them or anything. I mean, it, it kind of is because I'm showing them and recommending <laughs> recommending them to you, but I'm not, it's obviously not sponsored. But they're a super sustainable denim brand, one of the OG sustainable brands that truly wants to do good in the world. I won't talk you through all of their policies because like I said, I'm not an ambassador and I'm not being sponsored to say this. I just recommend them because I think they're a beautiful brand doing really great things. Anyway. That's me going on and on again about something semi-related to this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in another video soon. Bye.